Hello. So today, um, we will have Lucky on. Um, you guys know Lucky has one of the baddest dunks that that is that is out there. Y'all know y'all really um were enthralled by this top five stuff. And so I had to make sure that I brought a lot of the guys on that uh, were involved in that and that y'all really had a lot of respect and love for their cars. So Lucky is one of the guys. Um, You guys have always asked about, wanted to see, wanted to speak with. So I had to make sure that I do, did my due diligence to get Lucky on the show. So, Lucky, how are you today? Oh, what's up? Hey there. I'm good. How you doing? So, first, I wanted to tell you thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to sit down and talk to us and answer the fans' questions. We really yeah. appreciate it. What's good? So, first, I'll start off with one of my questions. I'm sorry, I didn't hear you. Go ahead. I say what the fans want to know. <laughs> So first, I'll start off with one of my questions, and then I'll get right involved, right into the fans' questions, okay? Yeah. You so me? tell us, yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. So tell us how long you've been into cars, and what got you into cars? I got my first car in 95, mm -hmm. but I've been into cars since I was a kid. My daddy had any car that you can imagine. Mm -hmm. And he used to pick them up. He basically did everything himself, so I kind of just followed in their shoe steps with the, the, uh, racing the cars and just being fixing cars up and having the cars. Mm -hmm. I guess that's been like a Miami thing. Like, it was already big on that. Like, And I seen that as a shorty growing up. So the minute I got a chance, shit, I did the same thing. Oh, this is a great question to start with. What was your very first car? First car I bought or the first car I got? My first um, car. Let's do both. The first car you bought and the first car you got. My first car I got, my mom done bought it, was a convertible 325 IBMW. Candy apple red on, el on elbow, 16 inch bold tires. Okay. Yeah. Mom them had you in style, your very first car. That was my first car. How old were you then? I was 15. Okay. The minute, the minute I got a restrict, I had a car and was driving. <laughs> so, so, go ahead. We used to have, we used to have B bus. I ended up, I ended up wrecking it. Like <laughs> one night, I was in the car with some friends and we was driving, and I had a B bus. And it went off, and I looked down for a second to, like, you know what I'm saying, to get it. It was a car broke down in the road. <gasps> Not, I missed He broke down. And I. the only thing that happened, he had, like, a metal bumper. So it caught the whole passenger side of the car. So when I looked oh, up, wow. I seen it, and I swerved. And it caught the whole side of the car. Oh, wow. So after that, it wasn't. I mean, the car still had work. I didn't fix it. I wanted a Chevy. Mm -hmm. After that, so uh, I had got I had got two cars. I had bought myself. I went out and bought I bought a a photo seventy three, mm -hmm. and the car was so clean. The funny thing about it, don't I got this done for twenty five hundred. That probably was a lot back then, but it wasn't a lot. But it's a lot. Dress me, but I bought it from this place called like a flower shop. And they couldn't, I had it for like a month. He couldn't give me the title. Okay. And back then, my parents, they was tripping. I'll take that back. So <laughs> I took it back. And then I went and bought me, I seen a, I went and bought me a box ship. Somebody just said that in the box. <laughs> yeah, but the box wasn't my first car. I had the don't first. Right. I ended up with the box Chevy after that. Okay. So what did your parents say after you when you when you had unwrecked that car? 
Oh, no, nah, they ain't really. My parents really in the streets. Like, they was like, I don't know. They ain't really trip. They ain't trip. I think that's when they was like, now you done wrecked that. Now you gonna go, you gonna fix that shit or go get your own shit. Like, some shit like that. They ain't, I ain't trip out. Okay. Anyway, because I'm a mama first child. She, I, mean, I get it. So you're a mama's boy? I ain't gonna say I'm a mama's boy, but I'm her first child. I'm her only boy. Wow. My dad got other kids, but my mom was the first and her only boy. So you on, you only got sisters on your mom's side? Yeah, just two sisters. Man. And I told her five and two more brothers on my daddy's side. That must have been crazy growing up in the house with all them, with them sisters and your mom, no. all them late autumn women. Not at all. Because mm -hmm. they love me and look at me. I had no problems at all. Like, I don't have no, like, I'm fighting with my sister or none of that type of crap. No. Right. Um, <laughs> so someone wants to know who painted the vert? Which one? So I guess the one that's out now, because you got to, we'll, we'll get to that. But okay. the one. <laughs> so my car, that vert been done more than once. So my car, the dude who painted my car is a dude named Mario. Okay. But he used to work for a shop called Ricardo's. And they did it the first time. But when they did it, something was happening with my car. Like, for some reason, the paint kept reacting. So I ended up buying me a Photo 71. I took all the parts and I used all that and did the car. Jose got it and did the car again. Because I actually had inherited that 71. My homeboy was going to prison and he didn't want nobody with the car. So he was like, man, I want you to get the car. I don't want nobody else to get the car. So I ended up buying a car from him and it was already over there. So they had painted it. But when they painted it, you know, I had it or whatever. And it wasn't, I hadn't took it to get everything done to the car. So they actually had painted the car because they had the car. But then I had that really big motor that Jose had built for me at the time. When I went to go put the motor in, Jose was like, it's going to tear the car. So he broke the car back down, did the whole car over. So I ended up going to Robert's, a paint shop called Robert's. Right. And they thought they did all the body work and did the car over. And then I had Mario come over there and he sprayed it. Yeah, so I have a how bit. long? So how long? I know, like, so a lot of the questions that I'm gonna ask, I may know, but just for the fans to know. Yeah. Um, talk to us about how long that car has been out. That car been out since 2007. I think it came out before Christmas of 2007. Uh -huh. I had it for one year, and it was out since 2007. Okay. First car so show. First car show was like in January at the fairground at uh, Miami Fairgrounds. So the car was out in 2007, yeah. and then you went you went to what what Murph affectionately called college. Then you yeah. went away to college for yeah. some time. But that was I, I but I played in the car like I hung out like we used to really like it was a lot more going on down here like. Every weekend it was something going on. So besides all the um the holidays or whatever, they always have something. So I drove around up until 2010. So I had it for three years driving around, going to whatever going on, tan up the streets. We did that. Every Friday pulling it out, going up the Broadway, six trunk, all that type of stuff. So I played around in it for three before I went away. And right when I went away. I was actually redoing. I had just had redid some things. So, like, that's when Forge Autos was just coming out. And I had went with the Forge Autos and tubbing the red in to make it fit and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. So, fast forward to when you were now out of college, which yeah. was what year? Last year. So, last year, so the car was garage kept all that time. My car been sitting in the garage all that time. So under under a car cover in the garage. Okay. Um. So that that's kind of I don't know really what that. Can you see that question? What question? They say, are you Haitian? 
Yes, my daddy is Haitian. So does that make you? I guess what your father is, right? So like, I mean, most people. I mean, if they know me, they know that. Oh uh, well, you gotta realize everybody does not know you. <laughs> my mom, I'm, my dad is Haitian. Of course, right. on my mom's side, I guess I just pulled her genes more. I guess I don't know so far. So. And being so here, you mom, so you yeah, more look like your mom. On both sides of the field, huh? So you more look like your mom. I think I'm older than my mom. So, what was your fit? What when you before you went away? What was your favorite year in the car in the car world? What was the absolute the year you was like, oh my god, this is just <laughs> that's tough. I think every year been my favorite. Yeah, I ain't gonna lie. Really. Cause when I when I was I've been in it so long, like I really come from the tree days, the Crenshaw, the one nineteen when he used to like, like I've been in it so long, like just getting in the car and going to the hangouts and driving fast and like stunting. I don't think it's that much done now. I think it's more social media like if you do something like to put it out to show that you're doing it but i'm like like we was really like hanging out like outside like i don't like it was i'm gonna say i think oh five oh six oh seven yeah them years like when you pulled up to the flea market you came through you did a donut or you got sideways you hollered at your buddies Somebody else come over there, they talk some shit. And then it was like, we racing tonight. Like, we racing. Right. We going to county line or we going to state road nine. And that's what it was. I'm saying they kind of got away with it when they started going. I mean, the track and all. But it was like, this shit happening. Only thing about you going to win or lose. Wasn't nobody scared. Like, now nah, it just, I'm like, car fast. I'm racing. And they're not really doing that. They just burn tires, put on the internet. Yeah, I'm running. They're not really, like, active. Like, you really did it, and, I mean, you lost it, you won, you come back. Like, they ain't really doing that right now. I'm with Pushan on that one. I think 99, 2000 was it for me. Like, it was just, it was just a good time. It was just a good time. 99, 2000, that's like when they had Capital Lua days and all that type of stuff. But it was on 20s. A person or two might have had 22s. I mean... It was good, but I think it was better when, like, when they made DUBs, and I think a little bit more. It been good, like I said. Like, I think oh five, oh seven, oh seven, that was the good years. But I really had fun from '99 to all that too. I think that was great. That was actually more dangerous because they tried to rob me for my box Chevy, and I got shot. Wow! So, so when they say the error then. It's a little different because, like, now, everybody outside, oh, you got to like, you get away with some stuff. Then that, that era right there, 99, 2000, like, the streets was, like, you really need to be in the streets. Somebody know you, they see you, like, word them out, oh, yeah, he's straight, like, you know what I'm saying? And even then, you still going to get, you know what I'm saying, like, tested. Like, it's always that one dude, like, I got to have Right now, so it's a little bit more comfortable, and I, and since I like hanging out and having fun, I would rather it be more comfortable. But it was them days, like you couldn't park your car at no movie, at no flea market. Like you go to flea market, like somebody gotta be sitting there waiting with your car while you ran in there. If your ass went to the flea market, came back out, you gone. Are you gonna see some glass down there? You calling everybody like, well, my shit just got stole, like. I don't know what you said about them being the good days. They was all right, but they was shit was going down. It kind of probably depends on where you live too. Man, what you mean? What in those Florida, days? Florida. Not not like like Miami. It might have been that way, but other places it might not have been that way. Yeah, <laughs> man, Miami going to wherever that's gonna make it worse. Miami back them days. Miami going to Orlando, to wherever they go out, where it's gonna be everybody at. My that shit coming back to Miami. When they when they get a call, oh your car down here, we found it in Miami. Oh yeah, I'm coming down there. When they get down there, that bitch ain't got no doors, no wheels, trunk gold, red, motor hood. You know what they do? 
that ain't my car. All right, I'm going back home. Shit. Right. Right. It's me right now. Most of the cars don't even got alarms. Nobody ain't doing that. It's good right now. As far as that, Pusho talking about them. You better really be that. I don't know why they ain't got alarms, cause baby, let me just tell you something. They'll still get gone. <laughs> yeah, but the real vultures, they on some other stuff now. So damn, you know you all right. <laughs> sound sound like you know a couple of them. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I was once with them a lot, you know. I, I know a couple of them, but I never say no names. But luckily, they changed their lives. <laughs> Yeah, everybody changed their line. That's better for a lot of people. <laughs> so, I, um, why do you think that um, it's so hard for us to work together as a culture? Eagles. A lot of these dudes got some ego problems. It's too, yeah, it's too hard to genuinely say. I like your car. It's nice. You know what I'm saying? Well, you did that, so I got it from you, so I went and did it. Dudes don't do that. Dude trying to be like, oh, it's me. I'm the, you know, I'm the top dog. Like, it's a persona, I guess they're trying to, you know what I'm saying? Back then, most, most, like, back in the days, I know a lot of dudes that even got some cars. Now. When we was fixing up cars, see, you had to really, like, love cars. I love the car games. Cause some of the, <laughs> some of these the, the era now they just getting on it because of hype now. Cause back in the days when we had the cars and we was fixing up a Chevy, some dudes would be like, Oh, that Chevy ain't nothing. They gotta have a farm and they gotta have a Benz like they didn't know what it is to fix a Chevy, but a lot of people found it out now. The thing about it, and it's not even just no don't, no ver it's everything. Cutlass, Regal, Box, no matter what it is, when you got that old school and you got it raggedy or however it was, and you go to putting it together now, that's why you can't downplay no man, because you hit one day, and you could be down there one day, like, everybody gonna get their chance if they just stack and do it, you know, chill, watch, look at this person got something, I'm gonna get something, and you know, take a little bit, and that's fine. But when you when you in this car game, when you going to go buy rims, you gotta buy the rims. You can't get rims and be like, "Oh, I'm riding on Aitens and you ain't paid for them." That ain't gonna happen. It's like you just go to car lot right now and say, "I got income tax thirty five hundred. I put down on a new car. My grandma just did it." Nah. So you see a nigga in a Chevy that just paid ten, fifteen grand for a paint, five, six, seven, eight grand for interior, fifteen, twenty grand for music. Like, you know what I'm saying? This money is gone. Ain't nothing you can do about it. You know what I'm saying? So it's a totally different ball game. So you got the dudes, most dudes and the older dudes who in the car game that was round, they real car heads. Like they they been stepping stones up, 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 up. So they really been into it. Now it's a hype. So now a dude who maybe never has something, he got it now, and he loud mouth and he just you get on the internet, yell something, hey. And then a couple of people run with it. You know what I'm saying? They think they're a big dog or a top dog. Right. But God bless the dead. Like, you know what I'm saying? When I was, Herbert's out here and he had a motor and all that. You know, I used to be seeing that. And I had a Chevy and I came through. When I had my other Chevy, I was just sliding through. But when I was building my GOAT, the, the, the 71 right now, I was building it towards one of them boys like uh, Murph, Morris, Little Man. These dudes always been around, you know what I'm saying? They've been a few years older, so they've been around. They've been in the car game. They have verse. They've been doing it. So I seen them. I'll pull up on them like, man, I'm coming for that Chevy. Like, it was cool. It wasn't no hate. It was respect. And I asked, like, hey, what you going to give me? You know what I'm saying? I talk, even though I know I'm sneaking, I'm feeling one. Like, I, I know I'm coming this time because I had already had one or two. And I, every time you build it, you get better. Right. You really do it. Every bill you build should get better. Right. Now, for the most part, all the shops have stepped up, so it's making everybody step up. You know what I'm saying? It ain't too many shops you could, you could go to and they can't take your car off the frame. Because if you go there, they like, oh, you can't take it off the frame? People going to be like, oh, I ain't going to them. You're going to go to somewhere else. You know what I'm saying? So 
I just think that the dudes back then, and there's a few of them still around the old head, Sim one, like these dudes I, the back in the days that have been around, most of the old heads you'll see in the car game, they're still doing their thing. They're real cool. Right. It's just the, the newer generation, not everybody's so eagle. You know, it's, it's more easy to hate a man. You know what I'm saying? You see him right now, then you mad at him, then you say, oh, your car, this, that, that. You should have said that from the get-go, like, hey, you know you should change this, you know. Some constructive criticism not bad, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But if you're building a car, I'm building a car, I'm building what I want. I don't care what everybody got. I talk some junk and yell, but I want to be something different. I'm different. I don't, If I pull up and I just look like five cars in a row, what, I'm going to say I'm a top dog. If you pop my hood and everybody, five five has got the same as that move. You know what I'm saying? You got the same move. You can't be like, I'm the top. You the top what? What you got that was so different or unique? Like, not knocking it. You know what I'm right. saying? Like, I love a lot of people's cars. It's, and it's a few cars that I'd be like, well, I would have did that. If I do it like that, that's how I do. Which is fine. I can love y'all cars. I love mine more. So I'm going to be, when we ever talk about mine, that's mine. I did it. That's my protege. Reflection of me. So you're supposed to feel that way and then not be hate. Now, if you say something, everybody, oh, you hate him. How you hate him if, to, if I just didn't like him? Right. Some people don't like red. Some people don't like gold. That's cool. Some people don't like, won't want to be loud. Like, they want to just be black or they want to be chill. That's what you got to understand. That's just a personal opinion. Oh, they don't like it? All right. I don't think you hate him. You don't know what is hate. You know what I'm saying? And a lot of these dudes don't let a car get in the way of just being like, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, uh. I don't want to say what I want to say about that. Uh -huh. <laughs> I don't want to. They be already so, mad at me, but. So, let's, so let me ask you this. Yeah. What's so up? let me ask you this. Do you feel like, speaking of back in the days, right? Do you feel like <clears throat> the newer generation has a problem with paying homage to the generation that came before them when it comes to the cars? Uh... I think some dudes get in their feelings probably just to who it is, like who they talking to, because but most of the dudes that when you say pay homage, they still in the game. You know what I'm saying? It's a difference if you don't got and I'm just here talking about what I used to have. I'm not here talking about what I used to have. I got it right now. So it ain't, it ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like it's so you gotta recognize it. Like, damn, you still because most dudes ain't gonna have it. Regardless of the situation, you know what I'm saying? You will hope that everybody have it, but if you're doing, man, to, to have a car, to have one of these Chevys, and especially with the top five and all this extra stuff they got, everybody trying to do and got going on, it'll break you. Like, literally. Like, if it's, it's, it's always something to do to the car. Always. If it's your car, even when you just fix something and you get out, you're hanging out today, Man, last time when you was riding, you hit something or you burnt the tire or a nail went in it. Now you out, you catch a flat. You don't know you got a flat. You've been the rim. So now you need a rim and a tire. Like, you know what I'm saying? If you're making horsepower, you break things. Like, I just put 20 grand in a car and you can't see it. So my right. car looked the same. <laughs> but you know, I music and did all this. I'm just saying, I could have did something else. Me, how I'm thinking right now. Right. What it be happening? When I get in my car, I got this. You know how much race gas costs? Twelve dollars a gallon. For one gallon. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying. When you get in it, music, and it's a lot. Of, even the top five dudes, it's a lot of them be having something going on, or they still doing something, or something happened. It never ends. Right. Some of them gonna start the show now, maybe because I wrote them enough, or sometimes I bring out what's wrong, but. In actuality, those things are supposed to happen, man. You know what I'm saying? All you got to do is just pay. If something happened, you just want to be able to get it fixed. But if you got it, I don't care what it is. All this, oh, I got an LS. Oh, this is the new, what, the new motor. And them shit's popping left and right. Because you you ain't just got the stock crate motor that came like that and left and like that. You trying to outdo the next man, so you make it high performance, you're going to break something. Something's going to happen. All right. You know what I'm saying? But it's, it's a lot of nice cars, but, you know, it's just to each their own what it is that they like and what they do. But it ain't, it's real, it's real out here. 
You know what I'm saying? I came in like the end of 2020. I was in the halfway house to 21. So I came in. Everybody was rich. You know what I'm saying? A lot of dudes who ain't never had a Chevy got everybody a Chevy. Rich? I say everybody was. Oh. They're not rich no more. <laughs> they slowly, they, they slowly fading away. It's a lot of them you ain't seeing no more. But what the hell? My kid's phone must be in the combat football practice. So it's a lot of them that have that got some cars, you know what I'm saying? Spun that money, thought this car shit was sweet. And then they wanted to get what they seen dollar or novel, whoever had, thinking it's sweet. Now that shit in somebody's backyard somewhere or, or, or at somebody's shop half put together and they, they ain't, you know what I'm saying? Because they thought it was sweet. This ain't, this shit ain't sweet. It don't stop. <laughs> it don't it's absolutely, stop. that's absolutely true. One thing you put on your car, if you've been building your car for a minute, one thing you put on your car eight months ago, now it's obsolete. <laughs> right now, right now. I had got my, uh, I got all my little lights in the inside. You know what I'm saying? One of my lights on my, on my driver's side, now my the door ain't lit up. So I got to go to shop. I don't know what that happened. It's probably something simple. Came loose, wire went bad. Shit happened. You buy stuff brand new, it happened. But I got to do it. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Stuff happens. You know so I rolled saying? up on him on Murph Lane and asked him when he was going to let me interview him. So I, I, I will work on that. Who that is? Talking about, I got to interview Head next week because he's been in the comments messing with you so bad. What do you say? Head, listen, me and Head go back. Head, that's my nigga. Head actually, like, he jokes and he generally, that's what he do. He, some people can't take it. Like, he ain't really, like, he been doing this forever. I don't care. Even if I'm like, if I'm not even thinking about him and I walk up, he'll hit me with one. Beep, beep. Like, just that fast. Like, he said, it don't matter. He said, who poor now? He feel like you sneak this in him. He said, what? He said, who poor now? He feel like you sneak this in him. Oh, I know. I didn't know I know he ain't poor. <laughs> so, um, speaking of. He dropped three cars at the same time. I know he ain't poor. It's hard to drop one. Listen, I don't, speaking of that, I don't know how you guys drop, do, work on all them projects Man, at one racer. time. They don't call killer, killer for nothing. He had killer racer. So how do you guys work on more than one project at one time? Listen, I'm only working on one project. And I had no gray hair when I started working on my project. Now I got, if my hair wasn't blonde, it would probably be all gray. Yeah. It's driving me crazy. But that's going to happen regardless. See, that's but another thing. On that more than down one here. project at a time. Like, more than one? See, what happened down here, while some projects are a little slow, but Corona you know, messed up everything. So parts, some places actually waiting on parts, still hard to get. And then everybody had, like, so many people got the same thing. So, of course, you're going to be waiting on the parts, like, if you get this, everything the same. So, uh, like I said, everybody was rich a few months back. So, shot was super deed up. And that's what was taking, you know, cars and probably taking some, you know what I mean? Hopefully, if they had paid all their money back then, then they all right. But if not, they ain't gonna, it's a lonely summer. I'm still waiting on a lot of people that, like, I don't know. I wish them well, though. I was just saying the reason why sometimes I still be hitting at them because they wasn't humble. See, a lot of these people not humble, man. Right. You got to be humble, man. My day is coming up. We want to call a nigga, po ass nigga. Like, I don't call no man that. Like, right. Nigga. Right. You, know you just don't, I don't disrespect no man like that. Like, if I'm really, if I, I can take it. So right. don't dish to me and can't take it. I play chess, not checkers. Right. So while you laughing and kicking, I'm over here on the side. I'm actually working and I'm, I'm, you know what I'm saying? So, for instance, if you call a dude broke, right? Right. And he not broke. So you call me broke, and I know I'm not broke. You know, I ain't finna get in the argument. I'm laughing. I'm like, you know what? You right. But had you call a dude broke, and he really broke, you're going to see, ah, he mad, he yelling, my dad. And you go through all that. You know what I'm saying? So uh, that's, that's, that's what happens. So the, for the most part, I just say the dudes ain't humble. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, I see a lot going on right now. 
you know, it was it was it was it was big sad to say. You know what I'm saying? So, so, uh, the men can't just like talk. Everybody feel like I don't know. Like everybody feel like somebody. You know what I'm saying? And I've been rolled, and I done heard you say, "Ah, oh, y'all always messing with Lucky," and I'm like, "Y'all ain't y'all ain't y'all messing with me because you want to be me." See, so, so I, that's how I always look at. So I'm not never mad. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot going on. I know what you gotta come shoot for me. You know what I'm saying? So I take it as a compliment. Because I know a dude can't really say, man, oh shit, tough. I really like your shit. There's a few dudes that done said that. And some humble dudes that say that with no pressure. Even when I was around. But now you got a dude that feel like, oh, I'm spending money now. You ain't spending right now. So I'm the see he's a low self-esteem dude. You know what I'm saying? Because if you doing it, or if you doing it right, somebody gonna talk about it. I ain't got to talk about it. You won't actually hear me always. You might hear me arguing or debating with somebody, you know, because they said something. I just ain't going to let nobody little boy me. I'm going to fuck who you think you is. What little money you got today? You know what I'm saying? I, let me tell you what they always used to tell you in school or whatever. What's your five-year plan? You niggas ain't lasting two years or a year. So I definitely ain't worried about that. But not saying that to be in no, I'm just saying, like, I'm a humble person. like. But you poke a bear, I, I could get your ass now. I, I could get fresh. I just chill because I'm a little older. I'm more laid back. I'm trying to be out here. You know what I'm saying? On these cheap ass rims. <laughs> That's a shot to somebody. They know who that is. So um to switch gears. Um yeah. I'm gonna tell you one thing that I really love about um I would say um, what I would affectionately call your transition from college. Yeah. Um, the fact that now, <laughs> and to quote, to quote head, y'all, you're a YouTuber now, right? <laughs> huh? I be chilling. But the one thing See, I my have college, to do my college, prison, whatever you want to call it, I'm not mad at it's no day. I walk around in prison every day smiling. Because when I was in, I know what's going on. It's not the end. I looked at it as he sought me down for me to, because I was really like, people don't know because I don't put my business out there. So I let you, whatever you think that's fine with you, you got to really know to know. But I was so far, like, really off the chain and doing things that I feel like I'm alive. So right. just like, you're good. I, I know you're good. So let me pull you right here. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I had the warnings. I even dreamed my situation before. I was like, I had it. But really? you know, when you go and do things, yeah, on God. So, so you dreamed that you were going to go to jail? No, nah, I dreamed my incident. Oh. You know, like, say for instance, uh, you dream you having a shootout tonight, and then, you know what I'm saying? Like, dang, I shouldn't go there. Like, you know, that look, that's because. And my plot, I know what I'm finna go do. So I guess I was that was my intuition telling me, no. Nah. But I just pushed past it this particular time. So with that being said. So with that being said, I'm still here, right? Yeah, I can hear you. Somebody called interrupted. I know they see you live. I'm live. So with that being said, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I feel like it was time to, you know, sit back, recuperate. I wasn't never like, you know what it is. You know what I'm saying? I, I'm alive, so I'm Gucci. I'm happy. I look 20. I know I look 20, right? So I feel like I got another 30 plus on this beautiful face. Like, you look 20. Is, man, life is great, man. This is God's plan. Next year, well, in the next, because I'm big on speaking this into this. So next year, this time, I know I'll be a man. I'm saying, especially with my YouTube, it's taking off, it's doing well. Yes. Uh, I read all my comments. Y'all like, subscribe, and share. You know what I'm saying? Get at me. I'm going to get back at you. I know what you want to see. I got you. Man, what? <laughs> I get ready to date Chevy Boy. What did he say? <laughs> he said, This is the best interview. <laughs> you are you are a ready day County Chevy Boy. Salute. Much respect. So, yeah. speaking of the YouTube, um, that was my transition. I really, really respect the fact that you came home and hit the ground running. You know, it probably would have been easy because you was in there for a good minute, right? Yeah.
So, so it would have been easy for you to come home and have that woe is me and feel sorry for yourself and feel however you felt about the fact that you went away. So first of all, your intuition told you you shouldn't have done whatever you was doing. So that was that little, anytime you don't follow your first mind, and I firmly believe it's in life. Anytime you don't follow your first mind, you always end up getting messed up. I'm a God child, man. Like I say, you got to take, I ain't really get messed up. I, I got, it hurt the kids. For me, it's my kids because I'm really like them. Like, you know what I'm saying? Y'all get every shoe that come out. And now that I'm going, y'all only probably going to get, y'all, instead of getting four shoes or whatever I get, because I used to be buying me plus seven, eight more pairs. You know what I'm saying? And, and this every time I get a call, yeah, what your size is. So I say with the kids, that's what hurt when you being able to do things for your, for that aspect. Right. As far as me, like I said, I know what come with it. And I know before I left, I done did so much that right. I haven't missed nothing. Because unless you really like know me, or I got a partner or two or know, if I tell you, tell stories like they going to be like, like sometimes you'll be like, nah, that can't be. And somebody like, yeah, that happened. Like, so I didn't did so much that I'm Gucci. I don't even feel like I missed nothing. The only thing it is different to me is in the 70s, the 80s, the 90s, dudes was getting money, still had change. You know what I'm saying? Jury cars. It's the same thing still going on right now. You know what I mean? Besides all the unnecessary killing, but it's the same thing. So people will be like, oh, time change, something change. Nigga, I'm, I'm what? I'm going to change it. Like, I'm going to get out here. It ain't hard for me because I'm a hustler. I'm going to put that in wherever I do. I strive to be good at what I'm doing or the best. You know what I'm saying? I'm always the leader. I'm not, I'm not never with nobody. I'm not never following like, oh, he's doing something. I got to follow behind. I don't got to do that. You know what I'm saying? I don't need nobody to do that. Like, it's going, I'm going to be, like, it's going to happen regardless. Like I said, I did three years in the room by myself. I ain't never lost no sleep behind it. Like, I was cool with it. I like being like that. You know what I'm saying? I like when all the odds against me. I like when all the people against me. I like when they were saying, oh, it's, it's car gone. Oh, you ain't going to finish. I like what they were saying, what you can't do. Because while you saying what I can't do, I'm already like, all right, that's what I'm going to do. You know what I mean? So, if you take it like that, then you're going to always win. But if you bitter or mad at somebody, I ain't never mad at nobody I got, especially no hate behind a car. I ain't never that mad. Like, I always feel like you could get it, man. Whatever he got, you could get it. Everybody got the same opportunity. It's just that what you're doing with it. And then this might not, everybody don't got to, uh, how do you say, uh, what you eat don't make me shit. Like, you don't got to. You don't necessarily got to, uh, you know what I'm saying, do certain things to be comfortable with what people are doing. You understand what I'm saying? Like, you could buy just this, or somebody might, like, just want to have and don't want to spend. You know what I'm saying? Some right. people might like to go out, you know, on trips and do that. Everybody don't like to just do cars. Like, when they used to say top five, I'm like, man, top five a lifestyle. Top five not just about no motherfucking one goddamn don't. You got to have no other things going on to make you happy. A lot of people not happy because if the internet or any of this shit not right for them, it folds. So they'll get on there and make, they got to mean, they got to spaz out, all that dumb shit. You know what I'm saying? When you happy, you happy. I'm happy. Every day I'm, I'm in chill mode. I'm Gucci. I don't I always be with my little workout. I'm Gucci. I don't need to be in no drill doing none of that right now. I'm comfortable. I ain't worried about nothing. I sleep good at night. I ain't got. I'm not looking behind my back. Man, day I walk outside. You know what I'm saying? So, and in a point in time in life, people gonna have to learn that, and that's what they gonna have to deal with. Like I'm saying, like I went away. Okay, like I knew what it was. Like while I'm in here, I did some things that I probably wouldn't have took the time out to do. So now, you know what I'm saying? I do. <laughs> Crazy. So speaking of um, speaking of the the time you're gone, what I w one thing I was leading up to that I really respect and I and I love and I and I think probably the guys probably can appreciate this as well. Um, the prison stories that you that you talk about on uh, YouTube. Yeah. Talk to us about what brought that what that what brought that about. Oh, I've been. I've been had it in mind because 
I'm gonna be on radio in about another week or so. I gotta do some more radio stuff I got going on. I'm gonna be on a couple of the radio stuff. I got some interviews. I got a clothing line I'm already modeling. Like I got some shit going on. So the prison stories. I already was working on having like I actually going out to talk to kids. Not, not about you know the youth don't have brothers or people to show you things. You know what I mean? Like especially blacks. Like they don't really like stick together when it comes for you know what I'm saying. Like trying to tell you how you could get it and, and, and save or do it. That's not always the objection. Like. People always trying to get over it. You know what I'm saying? I don't think we stick together. You know, we good at that. You know what I'm saying? Like, you don't got to be the man. Like, I don't got to make all the money, but I would like to be included in making something. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like, if you round somebody, an individual, and you had something going on, and you ain't offered them the opportunity, and you know what I'm saying? You can't be like, oh, this is my partner, or this is my homeboy, I mess with him. You know what I'm saying? And then you don't offer him that opportunity. And then you want him to feel like he obligated to you. You see what I'm saying? So, with that, I've been was working on that like a non-profit. I got all that already together. Just to pull up, talk to some of the little, you know, youngest. Because I even talk to mine and sometimes it ain't embedded in the head. You know what I'm saying? And somewhere along the line, man, the world got crazy. So, I feel like I owe that that part of me coming home. Like that's just a part I'm gonna give back. It got nothing to do with all this other shit. It's just this kind of opened up the opportunity and that dope for me though. You know, and it's opening up good. So I'm gonna be doing that to, you know, talk to the younger like I went here, I'm still here, but I got the swag and I'm I'm I'm, I'm with it. It's not like coming to you telling you, no, you're not supposed to do this, blah blah blah. Not in that negative way, just for you. I wanna see you live. To be this age, you know what I mean? Like, because when we growing up, a lot of us don't make it past 25. And these dudes don't have nobody actually talking to them like that. And now, with this internet and all this shit, we got more opportunity to to a wider base. Like, right. my like, this dudes from like Detroit, Cali, like all these people be talking to me and like, man, I've been following you. I was wondering, I saw your car. So now, I open up those. You know what I'm saying? And they ask you, and if you how you say a genuine person and you know you actually doing something from the heart not not to say oh i want something you know what i'm saying right. and i think it'll work out so with that with the prison stories and stuff like that for the brothers that got out and making a difference it's going to open up a door for them to share their story you know let people see that after we get out of here because a lot of time when you go in there when you get out the, everything is stacked against you so if you do a crime when you got out, you should be able to, like, be able to get, okay, you on probation? After you do your probation, be able to, like, get back your rights, all your rights. You know what I'm saying? Because you have been punished for this. But once you do a crime, that's it. Like, you forever punished, even after you get stopped or they feel like they got to do a certain way. So it's not it's not for you to win in no way at all. So I'm trying to get that out there. Like, you know what I'm saying? We need some change with that right. to help us. So I think, so like I said, I, I definitely think that's dope because, you know, we all know people who have been away to prison. You know, some of, so, and, and the transition for them. Five. Huh? I see something. Nine, five, I got them. Go ahead. The transition for them, the trend, that's why I have to, I have to take my hat off and, and, and salute anybody who can come home from prison and actually stay positive and do positive things. I got a homeboy. And before he went to prison, he went to prison for trafficking. So, yeah. of course, if he was trafficking, we all know that he was, it was a lot of money. <laughs> so now coming home and not to make the money that he was making <laughs> is very, very difficult for him. So it's a struggle on a daily basis for him not to well, get... It's always a struggle when you have the mentality that since you had, you feel like you got to have, and now you want it back so fast because there you go with the internet and what you're seeing out here plays a role on that. Right. So if you're not given the opportunity or, or your partner or somebody ain't kept it real to you to help you, you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of people, when a person feel like you're going to be higher than them, it's that person gonna always have it hard. So if you lose something, like if they went away and he had so much, 
and not his partner, so called, or somebody they up and they can help him. They might not help him because they want to shine now, and that's that's they're not looking at it as they just looking at it as man, he had all this. If I get help, him, he gonna get back over me instead of being like y'all can both help each other, you know what I'm saying? Or open up that door for you. So that's what when I say speaking of, I mean, open up door, gonna be going getting to hear a lot of brother's story and putting it out there. You know what I'm saying? That's that's why I plan on trying to that's why I plan on trying to help. And I got like I say, there's some stuff coming going on that you know that they gonna see. I'm gonna be letting it be uh known real soon. Like I say, I got some big some big radios and some stuff going on. So that's one of the main goals though, because man, all the odds stacked against you. So you gotta get out your mind like that what I had or you know, sometimes when people go away, they still stuck in that 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 living space, like if you went away at 20 and you come home at 35 or 40, like your brain, if you let it be, still there. You know what I'm saying? When you when you get in prison, it's a lot of shit going on, and I ain't talking about no easy. Like niggas is really still living like they don't treat. Like it's a lot of stuff going on, so you can get distracted. And you could be doing something positive, then you have another dude like, man, he think he better than everybody. What he doing? And that nigga, you go to hear that, and it could distract you. Right. versus you trying to get yourself together. And you know what I'm saying? Saying, when I get out here, what I'm going to do? Because these are two things. Like, you get out here and you like, you done went scared straight and you ain't doing nothing. Or you going to get out here and be like, man, nobody ain't gave me nothing. I'm going to go get it. You know what I'm saying? Right. And you just got to have a positive mind space about it. You can't move too fast. And you just got to, you know what I'm saying? Take your time, man. Like I say, depending on what you have in life, you will choose that, that route. You know what I'm saying? What I got going on, like I said, nonprofit organization. What I plan on doing, and if everything work out, a few men, good men who done been there, be able to come pull up, talk. They'll end up making, you know, something off it, so they ain't doing that, for, and they'll get to do something that they might have not known that they didn't get a chance to, for somebody to do for them. So, you know, what I'm saying it's all in the works, and it's gonna take place real soon. Like it's like really taking off. You know, I think it's it's. I tell people all the time, right? Um. It's dope that not only did you have the mindset to do that, but it's also dope that you're wanting to put other people in a position to win. I think, I think the true measure of a person, right, is not just what you have, but yeah. the fact that you want to reach back and grab other people or put other people in a position to win. This is what I tell that, people all the time. That's what a boss do, though. Right. This is what I tell people all the time. Put people you, in position to win, and he continues to win. Right. I tell people that all the time. I know, okay, you don't tell me you love me. Put me in a position to get some money. Because one thing you got to know about me is I'm a hustler. And I'm going to get, just, just, just put me in front of the people. I'm going to get me some money. But a lot of people won't even put you in front of the people. You dead county Chevy brothers. <laughs> <laughs> right, exactly. Don't talk about it. Being right. his ass when he on it. When he on it. <laughs> I just see him typing away. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, man, I think in life, though, it just takes people, I think, some stuck in their ways, but with dudes, it's going to take growth. And like, when you, when you, like, when you that dude, you can be that dude around other dudes that's that dude, too. Right. But only if you're that dude, you're going to know that. You know what I'm saying? More than one boss can be around each other. If if it ain't more than one boss around each other, then that's what dudes, that's what creates hate or, you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you got some dudes that you offer opportunity and they don't want. Like, they drive is just, I want to be right here. I'm, I'm cool with that. And then you got some dudes that want to be there. So that's what you got to understand too. But at the same time, when you put in other people that's around you in position, but you know who your friends is and what it is. If, if it's all genuine, I think it'll be all right. But like I said, some dudes can't because they're not really that dude. If you was really that dude, you ain't going to be that uh, interrogated about another dude. You know what I'm saying? Like, when I come around all the players and it's, it's, it's everybody around, chicks or whoever, like, I'm him. I'm not worried about what you got on. None of that. None of that matters to me because she going to see it. And anybody else gonna see it because my presence, my demeanor, demands it. You know what I mean? Right. So it's just your drive. My drive wasn't to let me. If anybody, 
gonna have some dudes to say, man, Lucky talk that shit. And he was in print still saying that same thing. Like, that's what I did. You know what I'm saying? That's that's me. That's my that's my gift. Right. So so tell everybody about your YouTube channel. Let's cover everything you got coming. What what we need to support? Um, what 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 would you like for us to know? Seventy one lucky. That's my YouTube channel. That's a real big support because now I'm actually it's giving some of the dudes an opportunity to make money for their lives that they invested in. Like a lot of us invested in all these things around us. So now us as black men, we give an opportunity now to make honest, legit, legal money, you know what I'm saying, just for being ourselves and being crazy and doing some of the things we do. Now, how far you choose to work that platform, that's for you. But I got, like I said, I got that company, y'all know, on Instagram, you know, I upload certain things. Uh, like I say, I, man, it's a lot coming. It's coming fast. Like I say, uh, I ain't gonna give too many names of some things because I'm working on, I don't want nobody to take, just be taking names, so I'm already working on them and doing that, but everything is like lining up. You know what I mean? So real soon we're gonna be seeing. I ain't man. messing with your head. Go ahead. <laughs> if I can help anybody in any kind of way, man, I help you, man. I'm never it calls blood, please. So so speaking of that, guys, uh Lucky, this is Lucky's YouTube channel. And y'all go um subscribe to his channel. He is like about less than 40 away from hitting 10K subscribers. So everybody on here, all 122 people on here, if y'all are not subscribed to Lucky's YouTube channel, y'all go subscribe to his YouTube channel right now. It's 71 Lucky. It shouldn't be hard to find. I'm going to be showing you, I'm going to be showing you like behind the scenes. I'm going to be showing you what you don't get to see. I'm giving it to you. Like, I ain't going to be hiding nothing. I don't, I ain't no editor. So y'all want a special cameraman? Nah, I'm giving it to you. Me, we come in blood raw. It ain't no editing right off my phone. It's, 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 it's all love. That's what it is. So what you see is what you're going to get. I'm, I, I read all my comments. So I see everything that people be asking for more what they want to see. I got you. Don't trip. And most of the time I respond. So they're going to definitely see that. So. Well, Lucky, you about yeah, to have... You about to have a million subscribers, so you ain't gonna be able to respond to all them comments. But we we know you we know you you in your head you. I'm gonna get two more workers. I'm gonna get, see my kids. I'm gonna put them on it. <laughs> Y'all want to start making some money? I got to go on here. That's what I got. That's what I got to do. I got to bring up everybody around me. You know what I'm saying? So they gonna be the ones. That's a job that they getting, man. But that's what's gonna make you different. We got to go in here and see what you got to tell me. Daddy, somebody said something, such, such, such. All right, we got that to know. That's what we're working on. That's mm -hmm. that's what it is. Jack said go follow his YouTube as well, 71 Purple Rain. Okay, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> so where do, you see your, where do you see yourself and your brand in the next three to five years? Man, I see me in the next year and a half. <laughs> This brand on like everybody said, oh, I knew he was gonna do that. Like, I seen it. That's lucky. Like I really, I want. I mean, I really wanted to be like. You know what I'm saying everybody want all the money in the world. I wanted to be that I can really show and help people. You know what I'm saying? Even if I, like, say for instance, I wanted to be so good that I done made enough money that I go out here and fix a car. And there y'all go, y'all you know, raffle, and not no raffle like make money. I'm talking about actually, y'all just either buy like a shirt that I might be selling for twenty dollars, whatever, and that puts you in already. We go ahead and pull your name. You want to come, like a drop. You know what I mean? Oh, I'm doing, I'm doing, I'm doing, and they from Georgia too. I got two cars coming down that I'm gonna be doing. You know, I'm helping, working with. So, man, I got, I, I ain't gonna lie, I got so much going on right now. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Let me stop you there. So you, so you, so if somebody wants their car put together, you could do that for them? Yeah, I'm helping with that. I ain't going to, I'll be there and do everything if they really, if we in the greens, what we spending, the route we going, and what you letting me be in control of it. Yes, I got you. I got two cars coming from your way right now. 
Oh, wow. And they're coming at the end of this month. Wow. So when we go to building those and working on them, you know what I'm saying? We're going to show that. That's dope. That's dope. So, 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 so not only are you a YouTuber. Yeah. A full-time dad at, at football, football practice with the kids right I'm now. I've got football practice on the interview right now. <laughs> right. Um, um, you put together people cars. You got I'm also a brand ambassador. I'm a brand ambassador. What's I'm the name of the clothing line? Yeah. F and D. Okay. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a put, I put up something the other day and I tagged it. Uh, I got my book coming out. I'm about to have published. Raised in the County of Dave. I already read it, so we waiting to get it uh, published and all that. So that's coming out soon. I mean, we headed to the top. So and you, and you're going. working on your own vert, another one. We got all that in the making. Wow. We got all that in the making. I'm about to get a box Chevy, though. <laughs> you getting a box Chevy? Yeah, I'm finna do a box Chevy. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'm so coming for the number one box Chevy spot. Oh boy, I think that was a. I ain't gonna say nothing. I ain't got nothing to say. <laughs> so, Lucky, this was really fun. It was very informative. Um, yeah. So, so I already like I like I said, I really believe in giving people their flowers while they are here. So I yeah. think I think you're a dope guy. I think you're very charismatic. You know, with a great personality. And and the other thing is you're you're really humble, and that I think is going to take you a long way in life. So, not only you know am I speaking for myself, I'm speaking for a lot of the fans as well. We we really we really like you. <laughs> Say me about the <laughs> what? We already talked about me getting the box, man. You told me get an answer as my goggles. <laughs> <laughs> You can't get no SS Monte Carlo because then I got to come for you. Man, they told me I got to get a box again like I had the box back then, bro. So I got to I got to do the box, bro. <laughs> so, Sony, like, bro. thank you so much for sitting down with us today. We really so, appreciate it. We really appreciate so, uh, you sitting down with us today. Is so, there anything uh, else? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. In a year and a half, you know, I have me uh, about half a million subscribers. I'm saying two, three hundred, somewhere up in there. I have my show, and hopefully, I'll be seeing you back on my show. I'm, I'm just let me know when. I'm, I'm, trying I'm, I'm, I'm trying to fly you in to my show, and we gonna have it works. What you need, your hotel, like this, how we live. You hey, know listen, what I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. My so, grandma used to tell me if you stay ready, you ain't gotta get ready. I'm ready. So this, this July fifth, and two days will be one year since I was released from the halfway house, which is last year. July 7th, 2021, 7 o'clock in the morning. So that's a, that's a blessing, man, to just be. The time going by so fast, too. So, um, man, I appreciate coming on the show. You know what I'm saying? I watch it. I like it. Dollar ain't your proper. This is how I am. <laughs> <laughs> you this told was me fun one. Proper. This was definitely a fun one. I appreciate you, Lucky. Um, So... Uh, we'll be looking. We'll be we'll be in tune and looking for everything that you say you got coming. Yeah. And again, so, guys, everybody that's on the live, make sure that you go and subscribe to Lucky's YouTube channel. Um, we we okay. could get. We, I know we can definitely get him to and over ten thousand. Uh, before today is over. So everybody, go subscribe to Lucky's YouTube channel. Let's support this brother. He making a great transition from coming home from prison. And um, you know, we gotta we gotta have his back. Most definitely. So Sorry they got a little too dark in my car, y'all can't see. <laughs> oh, you good, you good. We 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 wrapping it up anyway, so you're good. So it's thank you good. for sitting down with us. We appreciate it. Anytime. Have a great day. You too. So guys, make sure that y'all, like I said, go subscribe to Lucky's YouTube channel. Make sure we support the things that these guys are doing out here. You know, people could be doing anything in the world um, negatively, but let's support when people are doing positive things in the world. Um, you know, let's support these guys. They, it's, it's hard to be um, an African-American man in this, in this world. So let's support them. Also support the ladies. Support the ladies in the culture. When we have things going on, just make sure 
you support because support is important. So with that being said, that wraps up today's episode of Rides and Vibes. If you guys did not catch the full episode today, check out YouTube in about the next 30 or 45 minutes. I'll have the full episode um, uploaded on YouTube. And I appreciate you guys for continuing to rock with the show. Um, September 2nd will be three years of Rides and Vibes. I appreciate y'all guys keep for continuing to tune in, continuing to support what I do, um, continuing to just make sure that you guys follow what I have going on. I don't take anything lightly that you guys support when it comes to KP. So I appreciate each and every one of y'all for tuning in week in and week out. And I'll see y'all next Tuesday for another episode of Rising Vibes.